determination of significance for the purchase of the 39 acres, the Brucker property at 280 Phillips Road. Um, does the board have any questions about this? No. Okay. Um, any, I mean, I guess I could, I could say to Charlie, how much of this should I read? So I can read it. Okay, I if trust you like. that you'll be more judicious than me. Well, I may not, but I'm just going to read it. Okay. So, a resolution of the Webster Town Board to determine the significance of an action under the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker. At a workshop meeting of the town board held on the 25th day of June at 5.30 p.m., all were present. The resolution was offered, uh, this says you're offering it, but I will, and moved to its adoption, whereas the town board of Webster is the agency having responsibility obtaining and acquiring available land for open space in the town, and whereas the town board has declared itself to be the lead agency for any purposes as set forth in Article 8 of the Environmental Conservation Law, also known as seeker and whereas the full environmental assessment form was submitted to interested and involved agencies monroe county department of transportation department of planning and development and environmental conservation and whereas the town board has received the feaf regarding purchase of arable land currently or formerly used for agricultural purposes with the intention of increasing increasing the open space footprint in the town the Town Board has assessed the environmental significance of the proposed action. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town Board declares the purchase of 39-plus acres of vacant arable land on Phillips Road, a portion of property identified as 050.02-1-39.1, for the purpose of preserving open space in the Town of Webster to be an unlisted action, as described in 6 NYCRR, also known as CEPA regulations, Section 617.5, in that this project does not meet or exceed the thresholds contained on the Type 1 list and not contained on the Type 2 list as set forth in Section 617.4 and 617.5 of the Seeker Regulations and does not have significant adverse impact on the environment based on criteria set forth in Section 617.7 of the Seeker Regulations. And that is my motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. I can get you to sign all the documents. Charlie, if you don't mind just telling everybody what happens next, because I know you know what happens next. Well, you're going to sign. i got a couple of pieces of paper for you to sign. And then uh, I'll take them to the... Uh, we've already delivered the checks, but they're held, yeah. being held in escrow. And I'll bring those to um, Tan Riley tomorrow. Yeah. And she will see to it that they're recorded, and then we will own the property. So here's the, wait, 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 I, got, I got a copy of the deed. Yeah. I, obviously, the deed was the, she's got the original. Charlie. I, so, can someone submit a petition for thirty within thirty days? No, this is not subject to permissive referendum. Okay. I, before we move on to the next, are we ready to move on to the next one? Yeah, you sure. Go ahead. Okay. I I do. I just want to thank the Brucker family because they approached the town with a desire to keep this as open space and preserve the agricultural field and they care very deeply about the town of Webster certainly they've been here for generations and uh, I want to thank them for this opportunity Okay, well, we'll multitask. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, just Mr. Link has got a short uh, time frame, right? And I said you were first, but I said we get done with these two kind of housekeeping items. Um, I've got to be in Greece by 6.30, I've heard how you drive. You'll get there by 6.40. Don't worry, Tom. You'll, we'll have you out here before then. Um, now, the next item, uh, it was a tabled item from last Thursday night, just until we got clarification, and it, it, uh, I think it, it has to do with the Ridge Road multimodal uh, sidewalk project. I think we have received that clarification, and I'm going to say both from Charlie's input and from Paul's input on that. Um, so I think we're ready to, to do this. Made as the total budget for the project, or what's on Schedule A of the state's uh, agreement? Uh, 
Well, now that's a very good question yeah. because I had said to the board uh, earlier that you caught something that I was really happy you did. Is that in December of 2019, the board did a resolution that spend no more than five hundred and one thousand dollars right. from town monies, and you calculated this once the numbers all flushed out mm -hmm. that it could be as high as five twenty. Right. <clears throat> You also said in the email you sent to me that you didn't know if we had to do that, any type of resolution on that increased money today as much as just monitor it as it goes along. Correct. And just so the board is aware that there there is a possibility in the future we might have to do a resolution to go upwards to $520,000 of town money where right now the most recent resolution is 501. Well, this agreement is for two million forty-one thousand, my recollection. Yeah, right? yes, two forty-one zero three five. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. That's and the important this, resolution. That's the amount, the total amount <coughs> that the state is, is basically guaranteeing us. Correct. Okay, so we're signing an agreement that we're going to accept that money. Right. Okay. Do we do we have to spend so much of that money? Or we we have to are we agreeing to spend all of it? Yeah. Are we saying we're going to keep or we're going to keep the project within that limit? Uh, no, not necessarily. Yeah, I mean it can go over; it just increases the town share. So it, that that increases, the state's concerned. In other words, they the, don't the, care. Inc the increase in the, in the amount, which is I think thirty thousand five hundred dollars or something like that, right. is an increase increases the town share as well. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's important to clarify that we're not getting money from the state or from the federal that's 2.041 million. No. We're getting a percentage of that. I think it's in the 1415 range. Yeah. And then the town and other funding is responsible for the rest. That's correct. Okay. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess I guess we need a resolution on that, right? Yep. Yeah, and I have this is this was the verbiage from the resolution from I think okay. it has from following this week's bed I don't think anything has changed. It was just we stepped back as a board last week and said, let's put the brakes on this uh, and go and check our math. Uh, basically, let's measure twice, cut once. And I'll use the mm -hmm. cut as the resolution. So, Charlie, do you feel it's appropriate to pass it, although we in December had said no more than, or do we have to? Well, we're amending. We're amending it. Um, yeah, it's fine to do that. I'm just. I mean, what, as long as the board is cognizant of the reasons why we're doing it, and Paul is in agreement with with why we're doing it. Should that I think that he's asking, should we make an amendment to the resolution now? The prior resolution. What's that? A prior resolution, or do you want to do you want to note the prior resolution? <coughs> note the prior and, and increase. Should we make a resolution to increase? We will not expend more than five hundred and twenty thousand dollars. I think that's what is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we need to include that in tonight's resolution? Well, no. Then Paul said that that we may have to spend more in the future, correct? Right? Yeah. We don't know. It's a budget, so it looks like we're going to go over, but I suppose there's a chance we may not if the engineering we can wait comes. Wait until we get closer. To one week. Yeah, we might even be over more. Yes. Yeah, so it's probably better to wait till the project okay. is. Okay, I don't want to have to amend it three times. No, that's that's, that's all we need to know. That's yep. yeah. Yes. Okay. Unless we just pick for. a high number, but we yeah. probably don't want to do that. This is a bit of a, I don't even know if it is a tangent, but I think that what has transpired on this project, and I'm glad it's moving forward, I'm sure everybody is, but I think there's some, a component of it that might qualify for some of the uh, additional expense from COVID-19. That remains to be seen. <clears throat> that would help. Hey, you don't ask, you don't get, right? Um, anyway, so, Charlie, would you mind reading what you think is the pertinent? Oh, no, this is a short one. I'll read it. Okay. Uh, proposed resolution of the Webster Town Board authorizing the town supervisor to sign amended agreement between New York State Department of Transportation and the town of Webster for the Ridge Road Multimodal Corridor Project at a regular board meeting. 
held on June 25th, 2020. At the board present, the following offer, uh, resolution was offered by Supervisor Flaherty. Whereas the project for the Ridge Road Multimodal Quarter Project PIN 4760.98 is eligible for funding under Title 23 U.S. Code, as amended, the calls for the apportionment of costs such program to be borne out at the ration of 80% federal funds and 20% non-federal funds. Whereas the funds of this project have been approved by the Genesee Transportation Council and have been included in the Transportation Improvement Pro Program, and whereas New York State requires that the Town of Webster enter into the, an amended agreement with New York State Department of Transportation for the apportionment of the federal aid funds, and now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board finds and determines the proposed agreement provides an important benefit to the Town of Webster and its residents and authorizes a supervisor of the Town of Webster to sign the agreement. Be it further resolved that a sum of $2,041,835 is hereby appropriated from the project funds and made available to cover the cost of participation in the above phase of the project. That is the resolution proposed. Wait, I think it's, I think it's, two, it's, it's 2, 41, 41, 30. Oh. 35. Two zero four one zero three five. Oh, sorry. Did I say 835? Yeah. Oh, that is a zero. That was the old one. The old okay. One. Yeah. This two is million. Two, two million forty one thousand thirty five dollars. Zero thirty five. Not eight hundred and thirty five dollars. Bill second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Tom. I said we'd be done with that in five minutes. It actually was about eleven. Now. Mr. Link, uh, coincidentally, stopped up at the office today, and I'm glad that we got a chance to talk because uh, um, what we were what we're going to discuss tonight, I think, first foundationally, um, the board needs to be uh, comfortable, okay, it's legal, combination of all those things that this doc would go on to parkland property. Because really the way I understand it, the board four or five months ago when we were, when we were going through possible properties that the fire department was looking to put this dock on, I don't want to speak for the rest of the board, but none of the board members uh, saw the parkland property as a viable option that at least it was not being discussed. There was discussions of, of where you currently have your dock and it's rented from a private citizen who owns the property. There was discussion of the county property. Um, there was discussion of buying another piece of property down there. Obviously the West Webster Fire District buying that property. That's what and like I said, I don't want to speak for the board, but that's what the board was under the impression were the options being looked at to put the dock. Can I interrupt? Please do. Tom, the last I remember is that you and me and Mark and John and maybe Patty, we were right huddled right here looking at the section of doing that. And we saw that, it, and I noted that it was on town park property, and I said, that can't happen. And and you guys were not aware of that. And so I made you aware of that because it's town park. We can't do that. And we discussed it a little bit further, and then we, you, that was the end of it for that evening. Um, and then I went away for 10 days, and when I came back shortly thereafter, I heard that it had been approved to put on the town park land. And, but none of us seemed to know who approved it, how it got approved, or, or what went through it, because anything that's on town park land is very, very strictly uh, regulated by the state of New York. And if there's a clause that says that we can do that, none of us are aware of it, because uh, we've gone through this this uh, circus before with the Van Ingen Drive and all this, you know, where we've had to, we've had to do that before, and none of us are aware that we could do that or that we could lease it to you, or, or any such thing. Um, so my question is, how did this come about? I mean, were you involved in a meeting with someone else? We were involved in the whole uh, Ready project. Obviously, we were at multiple meetings 
we discussed three potential locations, the only one that was viable that would work was the, the little corner right at the far western section of the town property there. Um, the other piece of property is where the pump station is, and the footprint on that is so small mm -hmm. that there was no room for any other building. In fact, uh, since then they've said that they're going to have to build another building there anyway for a generator for pumping. So that absolutely doesn't allow us to put anything there, and there's no parking there either. Uh, the other piece was at uh, Mayor's Marina, a piece that the mayor owns. Um, currently we're, we are there, they, they charge us nothing, they've been really good with us, but it's it's not a viable, it's not a great site either in that it's the last slip in closest to shore, so as soon as the water starts to drop, we just had another, I, I, I don't know what the, the bill came in to fix that, but as a result of coming against a break wall in there, which is a steel beam with a sharp corner, it punched a hole inside of one of the boats. So we got to get that fixed. It's, 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 a, it, it's worked out well for as long as we've been there, but with this grant coming up, we certainly felt that if we could get it someplace else, farther out into the bay, we would be better off. Mm -hmm. um, we had several meetings with everybody involved there at that, at all of the ready meetings that we had. Um, and it got kicked back to that being the last viable site. Uh, we weren't specifically told at that time that there was a problem that because it was designated as parkland. The only issue uh, DEC brought up about it being there was there was some concern about mussels and aquatic life on the shoreline right there. But the only amount of encroachment that we would be involved in with there, the one end of the dock would hang on the proposed break wall that's going in there. That's about 30 feet off the water's edge. And we'd have to probably drill, just drive two pilings in the whole far end of the section at the water line, and the rest would be floating so there'd be no serious construction in the water line or in the, in the muck land there. Well, this became quite a surprise to me, okay? Uh, for one thing, I was co -chair, I'm co-chairman of the Sandbar Park Project, mm -hmm. okay? And so I've been involved in the, the, de the development of the plans for this and that, and that specific area has been designated for the launching of kayaks and uh, non-motorized vehicles, and we don't have another area to put it. We also are very, very short on parking. Parking is going to be a real problem for us. Uh, we're going to do the best we can to develop as much parking in the, in the project as we can, but it's a problem. The picture that I saw, the design that I saw, shows you having four parking spots gated and then four more designated for, for your use. Um, so I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I can sp speak for myself, and that is I got a problem with that, and also I still have a, I still have a problem with moving forward on this. If we all choose or chose to do this, I would have a problem moving forward with this unless I had somebody that that has the legal authority to allow us to do so, because we could go forward with all this and get everything ready to go and get the monies all. The, uh, develop, you know, uh, handed out and the contract signed and everything, and then all of a sudden find out you can't do that. Well, and I said was there, uh, Mr. Supervisor, the, yes. guy, the, the document that was referred to today by Terry. Yeah, and in fact, I you know I, I, read, I read that as well. Yeah, and, and it that, said people from the Parks and Recreation. It was it, it was Mark Yeager. I mean, they gave their blessing and. Right, so I mean, I, I'm sorry. Mark doesn't have the authority, didn't have the authority to do right, that. I mean, so all the meetings that we've attended, all the work that we put into it today, was based on that document. So, I mean, the, to, to get called in here today and say, well, we had no idea that any of this was going on or that the discussion was being held was a bit surprising to me as it was to you. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Um... I'm looking for that document and the date of that document. I 
document from Terry. Tom, I was not aware of any agreement that Mark Ager had with you. Uh, as a board member, I was vehement about anything going in our parkland besides the park. I was involved in this project when we first acquired the property six or seven years ago, and it was always deemed to be a park. It was never going to be a fire dock for the firemen. It was, it was never going to be uh, restaurants. It was supposed to be a passive park for the townspeople to use. I'm not on the committee for the Sandbar Park per se, but as an original board member who was involved in the purchase of that land, I never envisioned this to have the firemen down there operating a fire rescue dock, gated, fenced in, and parking spaces in, in a park that the townspeople are going to use, and the parking is minimal as it is for what I see for that use of that property. Okay, in the, in the print that I'm looking at right here, Councilman Dean was referring to, uh, we, we told them there's no need for any fences or any gates no, that's to, not to isolate that area. Yeah, give us a couple of parking spots, okay. The only gate that we asked for, and, and that's going to be on our dime, is a gate isolating the dock so you don't end up with 200 people hanging off of it, fishing and launching their boats and recreating on the dock because, you know, we all know where that goes. You end up with stuff missing off of the fireboat and, and bad things happen. Well, for today, I saw the, I saw the picture of it, the, the, the map of it, d uh, delineating all mm -hmm. that, and next to it, it says for um, kayak, canoe, boats crossed off. So part of our park is to have an area for that. Oh, absolutely. And, and the, the, the amount of land that we're going to require down there is so minimal. The, the, when it was proposed and everybody talked about it at the Ready Project meeting, it was like, yeah, okay, we shift it down that way 30 feet or something, 20 feet. You know, it, it was almost like it was a non-issue just moving that small... Yeah. And you know, once again, you'd have to, I'd have, to, I'd have, to, have to qualify the fact that all the meetings with all the ready people, the ready people may not have been aware that this is a park, or they may not have been aware of the fact that you can't do this in a park. Well, and there, there were other town representatives there also, but... Who? Um, Jeff Benway was there. Well, uh, Tom, when were, when were these meetings? I've got notes from November 20, 26th, and it indicates here... Um, I don't think you were here, but maybe you were there. It says Ted Scardino was the contact. The uh, yeah, pe the people at the meeting were Jeff, were all the town board members, Jeff, Paul, Barbot, and Scott Match Hatfield. And discussion at that time was that the dock was going to be uh, on private land the, at the mayor family area, not the, not the park. And then I know there was some discussion about the park, and I brought the up discussion the discussion about, after that about, about this was the last meeting in January because okay. right after that I left it with the floor. Right. So that's how I can remember this. And, and it, 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 the date is not on the memo from no, Terry Rice, not. but in the email it said it was dated 125. Yeah. Can, can I, uh, and when, and if I can interrupt a little to give you a little bit of history. When this all started, we heard second or third hand that the West Webster Fire District had gotten a grant for this fire boat launch ramp. I mean, we could... We, that you hadn't requested? It wasn't requested. Right. I mean, it certainly is appreciative, and we would certainly love to have that money, but if we can't do it on a town park, then, then make a motion that we not allow a public safety facility on the town park, and we can all leave here now. It's, it's you know, not a big shake, but... I mean, if there was a way that we could recoup that $78,000 grant and work something out, because as you well know, on private property such as that owned by mayors, we're not allowed to do any improvements. We're not allowed to spend taxpayer money on private property to do an improvement. Right. And our attorney, uh, P. Weissart, from a kind of considine, told us, yeah, we can, we can do something on Webster Town Park, or Webster Town property, 
merely by having the intermunicipal agreement. And the agreement would be to, to, to hook our dock, I mean, the dock and everything would be our property, so we'd still be responsible. If it was just town property, that would probably be accurate. But it's not. It's parkland. And the parkland is, is a, a whole different animal. Um, that usually requires a swap, that requires X action in Albany. Wait, it, and it no. requires if they, an if they action. Purchase it. If they purchase it, yes. Yeah, state yeah, legislature. Yeah, but that was an issue. Well, we we go through this. Okay. <laughs> even if we said that, yes, even if we all agreed to do it, it would be two years. Yeah. I, it's going to be two years. Later. If, I can, if I can just throw out these thoughts real quick, believe it or not. I do remember us huddled around here. Mm -hmm. And I made comments actually since then, and I feel like for $2.8 million of ready money on spread over four projects, that it's amazing how more than 50% of the board or time, whatever, is spent on the $78,000 of the dock and not on the other $2.7 million. That night, where I don't, rec I, I don't recall exactly the terminology of the parking lot, I don't even think it was even an option. We were looking down all this, but one thing I do remember, because I think Matt Chatfield was here, is that we were talking about if we could get it on some land, if you could find something, and Jeff was going to go see about that county land, because if we could get it on that land, and I do recall this conversation, that the 10% the, the engineering that had to be in by the 14th, we felt pretty confident that it could be portable. That then in the in the future, once the state accepted the engineering, that if we said, hey, by the way, state, we originally had it on this county land or whatever, but we're going to put it over here at the whatever. We were under such a rush to get that initial engineering done that to me, I think the combination of that rush, um, certainly there's people that were in the room at those meetings that you had every reason to think Tom were representative and making decisions that were binding to the town. They weren't. Um, I think now, and we wouldn't have to do a motion to just throw this thing back in the water. We would just throw it back in the water. But before we act too quickly on that, one thing we should look at is that can we do it in the park and even if we can, do we want to do it in the park? I think most of the board members, like, and, and I understand what you're saying, Bill, you were here when it was bought. You did not buy it to have a fireman's dock, all right? So that leads me to this other thing. We knew it was portable. Is there other land that you can look into because the 10% engineering is portable? Um, and we don't need to rush on this, I think, because we're pretty certain from talking to Matt Chadville where we want to move forward on those other ready projects, the road. Uh, in fact, the state is putting pressure on us to move forward on those others. But we don't have to get all four projects in at one time. We can lag on this one while you figure out, is there another piece of land? I would have to ask Matt Chadville to research how long is the, how long before they say, you didn't act on this. The state says, you're out of the 78,000. That, to me, would be a cooler heads decision tonight. But if, you know, it's like, well, this thing, we, we just forget it. I can tell Matt tomorrow, talk to the state or whatever, and, and we're, we're MO, whatever it's called, 61, I think, is we're not doing it. We're doing MO 56, 59, 65. I would rather not knee-jerk to that, but I also appreciate if you don't put it on the parkland, that now that's putting the, it back in the, the court of the fire department to find acceptable property to put it on down there, which my guess is is going to mean that there'll be capital buying the property. And it, I, I don't oversee your budget. I, I oversee our yeah, budget, not, so I'm not going to speak in that. To the, to the U.S. Mint, and as you, right. as you well know, yeah. There's nothing for sale on that bay outlet, on that bay isthmus that runs across the that channel that's even close or reasonable to even consider for the fire district. I mean, everything over there is, it, it might well be on a gold plate rather than on yeah. turf. John, do you want to say anything? You had an idea. Yeah, I guess I talked to Barry and that that's the 
fire department has already thought about that. Yeah, it's not really available to them. On, on a private piece of property. Yeah. I mean, is it, isn't that whole piece of property that you are in care of that's on the bay front, isn't that entire piece designated as parkland? Yes, yes. And across the street as well. So, I mean, there isn't. If, 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 the, if the fact remains that it's, it's not doable, then it's not doable. Then, you know, why are we all wasting our time here today? Who do I contact from the state to see if I can secure that grant, get it pulled out of that ready project, get it back to the fire district, so we can move forward and look and work on viable opportunities for the public safety end of this? Because well, we're all going to end up at that. I, I, as, as Tom said, I think you'd be better off holding off on that. Find out if there's a date, a deadline that this needs to be started, and investigate perhaps some other options. I mean, if you're going to put 78 into public safety, what, do you, what are you thinking you would do? Put some kind of a uh, dock and launching facility, not a, not a boat launch per se, but just a mooring facility, some place to keep the, to keep the fire. A floating, a floating dock that would adjust yeah, according to the depth of the water. Uh, on the mayor property. Well, uh, I, I don't know. Somewhere, but I don't know. Are, are, is, are you looking to buy land? Is that it? You want you absolutely want to own the land? Oh, we'd love to own the land. But short of having a million dollars to throw towards a piece for, for a dock that we use 36, 40 times a year, but, you know, I mean, we, we, we probably go 40, 45 rescue calls a year anyway on the, on the bay during the summer. But, I mean, plus all of our training, I mean, we're in and out of it. It's a floating dock. Do you foresee that the dock you're going to create is going to be movable, or is it going to stay in the water year-round? It would probably stay on the water year-round. Okay. Plus, they have a shed that goes along with it, you know, for the storing mm -hmm. of their equipment and that kind of stuff. Yeah, That's it part is, of the it is movable. That's movable with a forklift. It doesn't require a dedicated... Okay. Base or anything. It's, I mean, we, it doesn't have a foundation, it's, it's, in other words. Yeah, yeah. It's sitting on Cinder Ridge right now down it. So it sounds like to me that there's two questions that need to be answered. One, is it possible to put something like that on town property? I don't believe it is, but maybe there's some kind of clause that the people at that meeting know, knew about that we don't. Um, and two would be. Uh, can we secure the funds for them? How long? How long do we have before the funds have to be spent? Well, it's actually a third question: Is it palatable to this board to have that dock on park, our park land? And Bill, uh, my understanding right now is it's not. The answer to that for me is no, and the answer for me is also a no. So, if if the majority of the board would it's not palatable to have it on our park land, then I questions have, number one and number two are moot. I hate like hell to be on, be on the docket to be one to be against something like this. I truly do. But as also the person that's like the co-chairman of the development of this park to become what we hope someday will be something that people will come from all around to see is that, that that's the one section of that area that we have. That's the only section of that park that we have to build a ramp for uh, kayaks and and canoes and that kind of deal. So, you know, well, and, and I'm, I'm whole, wholeheartedly in support of all the things that you guys do, but in this instance, I would have to say I am not. Okay. So are you going to reach out to the people that are coordinating this project and see what time frame we've got, or... Oh, yeah, I... I me, who, who... I dig it all to Matt Chatfield. Who do I reach out to? OSG, or what... What? Well, I mean, and I was glad to hear you say because I didn't know if you meant swap the seventy-eight thousand dollars for like something that's not on the water because the ready grants are <laughs> that's totally isolated to water stuff. But the fact that you said, well, we can get the money in some other form from the state to do something on the water. I mean, we should talk to Matt about what, how long until we have to execute. We did the initial engineering, so we. Cross that hurdle. 
I don't know what the time frame is. I know, Paul, you said to me on some, certain grants that they sunset after a while. You have to execute, yeah. and, you know. I don't know what it is on this. Um, it's probably ways out, but we should check. Yeah, and then, I don't know. Would the, would the state, you know, and I don't know if you even want to put some type of dock on mayor's property and in the, in the state, we think the state's not going to allow that. It's a, almost like a leasehold improvement that they're not going to fund. I don't know that. I mean, maybe Matt. You know, it depends on what you're looking to do with it. Well, and, and the other thing you got to understand is mayors are in the boating business. Yeah. So if they've got a viable piece of property that they can put a dock on, right, and more vessels, they're going to do that when they can. Who own, anyone here own a boat? What, so what, what's, what's one dock slip for? If they've got four or five or six pieces of property start, strung out together, and they've got the ability to put five fingers and, and 40 slips on each I finger, yeah, I mean, I, I'm very, very appreciative to the mayors and how cordial and how responsible they've been in allowing us to keep a public safety facility on their property. I mean, they've been great about it. But here, is, this was an opportunity for us to do something where it would be on ours and our responsibility and our taxpayers' money would be going towards improvement of our facility. Yeah. And, and clearly that's not going to happen at this point, so. Well, and I mean, it's already 3 nothing. but I'll, I'll add, the more I look at that vision that Bayer has put together of that park and what's going to happen to that park, it is kind of a, no pun intended, a fish out of water to put that dock there and now take up parking spots when we're trying to build that park to be such a attended it's going to residential be a showpiece, showpiece for this town. Showpiece, great term, Bill, and it, and it does it doesn't make a lot of sense at all whether it's legal to do or not. I, I would have to be the. It's now four nothing. You don't have. There's no vote here. This is a Well, no, but uh, you know, I, and I've not seen the the park uh, plans as such, other than the last public meeting that we had. But I know that it was very desirable that it be more of a passive use of boats. We we did not envision a boat launch for motors and that sort of thing. It's a lovely, quiet end of the bay, and we hope that people again. It's we've talked about it, kayaks, canoes, all of that. And um, a, a dock for the fire boat and training exercises and all of that just really doesn't match the vision of what that park was going to be. And, and certainly I appreciate what you guys do as well. Um, to, and to say that, you know, we don't want you to be able to continue doing that is, couldn't be farther from the truth. We just don't see how it can happen there. And unfortunately, none of us... None of us were at those meetings, and it also wasn't communicated to us. And that's that's really the unfortunate piece, or this yeah, would well, have come I mean, up much sooner. It certainly wasn't on the fire district. Yeah. No, I no, no, we're not. No, the unfortunate part is not the insinuation. Not at all. Well, I, I know. Okay. I, I understand. I'm, okay. I mean, I'm not. The unfortunate part about all. It's all, it's all government. You can't take any of it personal. You know. They threw all. this in as a last thought. Of things to be done to throw in for the ready to get money out of the ready projects. Right. No consultation at all with the fire department mm -hmm. at the beginning, mm -hmm. and no consultation with the town board. And I'm just that's not the place for it. I'm sorry. No, we've Tom, I'm not trying to pick on the fire department, but it's not the place. For it. Yeah. And and, and I. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, and clearly I've got a difference of opinion having. Knowing the number of emergency, and, and you put that many more people in that area, it's just going to enhance our call load. And if you're going to want to try to protect the people that are using town facilities and town parks, it, it seemed more to me like it was more of a natural fit than an unnatural one. Yeah. But the call, it, the call issues you're talking about could possibly happen uh, to escalate that it won't be boating. Won't be boating. Won't be any more boating than it is now, because we're not we're not building well, it'll anything. Be, it'll be a, it'll be a ton more boating. You're talking about kayaks. What and kayaks? Canoes. Okay. 
You know how many times we've been to the shallow end of that bay for kayaks and canoes overturned? <laughs> dozens and dozens. And now you're going to take people that are unfamiliar. And the other, the other uphill battle I think you're going to have, and again, I'm speaking out of school, it's not my bailiwick, was that the DEC was concerned about those little mussels and the muckland and the wildlife and as a result of driving two pilings down to secure a dock. I'm sure when you come to them, because the DEC at the last meeting said, well, we've never seen the master plan. We weren't aware that there was even going to be a beach or a canoe launch there. They do know it. They absolutely well, okay, do know well, it because our, again, engin our engineers have gone through all of this with the DEC I, I time and time again, and including, including a flood mitigating wall that's going to go around the entire mm -hmm. area. We have their blessing. Right. So, Tom, I hope that when you head out to Greece, that, uh, and I can understand your disappointment and, and whatever, know this. I, I want to talk to Matt about what the tale is on this thing in sunsetting, so we at least know how much time. And it also, I, I'd like to be involved, if possible, with talk with Matt and you about how do you retrofit that seventy-eight thousand uh, dollars? I agree with you, Bill. It, the money all of a sudden came to us. Nobody ever talked to the board. Never. Nobody talked to the fire department. Well, that's that ship is sailed. We got this eighty grand sitting there. It would be a shame to have to throw it back. But let's talk to Matt. He's a pretty creative guy, and he knows how. To, you know, maybe there is a way to use that money uh, and get your doc. I don't know where. I know where it's, it's not going to be. But I'd like to be involved in, 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 in that process well, because sure I feel pretty confident I would report back to the board yeah, what's yeah, going on. I feel very confident about that, Bill. When it comes to working that out and dealing with all the different alphabets that we need to deal with to move this thing forward, OSG and DEC and all the other people, you know, I'm absolutely looking forward to working with you guys to figure out what our best avenue of retreat or whatever, however you want to word that. Yeah. You know, clearly, we would appreciate the funds to to make our facilities down there better, but, you know, yeah. clearly the last series of meetings have not spawned any clear answers here. Okay. So, okay. Safe right out to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, Tom. Can I get you to send this, please? You sure can. <laughs> I now know that you're. I can tune out because I know everything that Art's going to say. <laughs> you and my wife. Okay.
I shouldn't say we. You absolutely. Are. Thankfully, you did because there was uh, some turnover at the engineering firm, <laughs> and you wanted to just double check math and go over. Correct. It. And that leads us to where this. we are today. You're absolutely right. Now I'm going to go off your analogy from Ridge Road. You know, measure twice, cut once, and that's exactly what we did. Yeah. Uh, we took a hard look at everything. Um, and uh, came up with a number that we feel we feel is comfortable until it goes out to bid. Uh, we're hoping it's a you know the number is a little bit high uh, on the estimate, but uh, that's exactly what we did. So uh, we there were some changes in it. Uh, I did send that out in an email. I'll go through those. Uh, and you guys can ask questions. Changes from the most recent Excel spreadsheet. No, no, oh. no, to this spreadsheet from the previous. Uh, the, right. Over at Clem Road, uh, actually the engineers looked at it and uh, reevaluated the uh, the HVAC blower, which needs to be explosion proof, which it was not, uh, and so they re they went out got some uh, new costs on those. So that was a uh, fifteen thousand dollar hit uh, at Fawnwood. A ten thousand dollar increase. Uh, reason being, so there's we're adding two hatches is one component of it. Uh, that wet well has no ladder in it. So, uh, and case in point, the guys were there today. Uh, took uh, four guys seven hours to clean that wet well. Uh, to get into that wet well, we actually have to uh, modify a ladder to stuff it in there because the hatch is so small. So we'll be enlarging that that hatch. And we'll actually be adding a second one. It's a very big wet well, uh, so we can access uh, pipes and things on the other side. And when we go to uh, clean it, we can hose from one end and push it to the other. So that'll be a big improvement. Uh, the second thing we did, and we actually the engineers looked at it, and I definitely agreed that the uh, the pipe coming into that wet well, uh, we decided to uh, rather than make that the connection point in the wet well and tie into a corroded pipe uh, and have that connection in the wet well. We're going to make that connection outside of the wet well, straight pipe it in. It's a good connection. While we're there, we originally had um, uh, possibly replacing some 10 to 12 year old valves. Uh, this area that we're talking about is five feet wide. Uh, we're going to take those valves out, seeing we'll be right there excavating, and take the valves out, put new valves in, uh, and put a new bypass in. So if we have problems down the road, the bypass, bypass is right there, no longer having to call uh, pump trucks at God knows what. So put a pump in, pump it right back out, and we're good to go. Uh, really the... The other increase were, uh, from a 35% design standpoint to where we are today, uh, the escalation, they increased the es escalation up to about 5 6% uh, as costs increase. Uh, we increased the uh, mobilization a little bit and also the CACO. Uh, we bumped that up a little bit just in case uh, Clem Road, uh, the project combined, runs a little long. If it doesn't run that long, we don't spend the money. Well, I'm going to defer to the other board members, except for one question. I just wanted to make sure, especially as Karen Buck is uh, involved in a pro project to really kind of create a better flow and setting up board meetings, zoning board of appeals, town board meetings. Uh, planning board, the whole kit and caboodle. So with that, uh, in the future I'm hoping that the town board will get supporting documents to presentations like this many days before the meeting. I do want to make sure that the, that the four board members get from Kim, Doyle, or myself the Excel spreadsheet and basically the Word document that articulates what, okay, then that's the only question I have. Uh, because I do, in the future, I think it, it is, it's incumbent on us to get out to the board members that type of information long before the board meeting so they can review it and come to these meetings 
with that knowledge, having their questions, all that. So that's all I got. I did include in that Excel spreadsheet, I don't know if you looked at the bottom tabs, the previous spreadsheet with the current. So if you wanted to look back and forth. The only thing I would like to see on the pre on the current one that we have mm -hmm. is please change the date at the top so that it reflects now. It's it's a very small thing, but as we go back and we sometimes have to find history on things. I just want to be sure it, it reflects now. Yeah, actually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, I'm gonna have them change it because it's their file. I can change it and then I'll send it back up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the previous one was February 13th as well, so that you know they were just yeah. they were adding to that one, but I think I the date should be reflective of what it is. Which I sent up. Yeah. I didn't print it. Yeah, you have six eight. Uh, Mine says two thirteen. Mine says two thirteen. Engineering cost built into this price. Yep. Okay. I'm teaching you well, Paul. I'm the only one that asked that question. Uh, no, Bill would have asked that question. No, that's no, true. No, Bill would have asked that question. That's true. I always ask that question. It's very possible that you got that dated from them 6 8 after the one that they. Whatever you said, I guess. Three times. Yeah, mine says two thirteen. So it's fine. It's it's fine. It's it's a very small point, but I think in the future it could be important. Oh yeah, the devil's in the details, Patty. You know that. Right. Obviously, but that's the best estimate. So I have it at six eight. Do you have it at six eight? No, I've got two thirteen. It's got the change in numbers. It's got the bold. Really? But, uh, it's very possible. The one that you sent over to me says 847. Kim and I forwarded it onto the board. Yeah. And the and one that's you what sent I, over All right. Well, either way, I will resend it again. Yeah. Because I printed from the same one. Again, it's it's not a big deal. Well, it is, as we come to find out. It well, could be. Then, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, the next step is a resolution to approve this, which isn't going to happen tonight. But well, we got to give them an authorization to go out to bid. Correct. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. And that's, but that's a resolution. Correct. Which could happen next Wednesday. Apparently, is that a resolution to authorize to go out to bid? I can't remember. We have in the past, yeah. Okay. Well, I know on next Wednesday we were planning on doing the authorization to bid on the gym. Is that because that's a, why wouldn't we be doing it on we this? Can. Can. Yeah. Yeah. We just would want to paper it up where the supporting documentation is dated six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should do it. Um, yeah, can, Wednesday. Wednesday. can we get it on the agenda for Wednesday? We can. And let's move this forward. Is no. there enough lead time? <laughs> you know what? To be honest with you, in the, in the future, no. I know. But, but we do have the supporting documentation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting picked on now. <laughs> and, and, you know, why? John's picking on me. No, no. I don't want to really get into the detail. But no, you don't. Know. He is. So, so, you know. Thank you. I uh, you know Bill is like, uh, okay, well. I, uh, I, 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 I got to my own agenda for this coming Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Wednesday. Yeah. What I said. And uh, so for the authorization of it. Resolution to go off for bed. Yeah. Dang, that, that's it. Unless... We're going to talk about anything else. Yeah. i got a couple things. All right, Charlie. <laughs> I usually don't, but I do. Well, before oh. I go, am I, are you preparing a resolution? Do you want me to? No, you, you prepare it. Okay, very good. And I'll get the dates from her. You, get it to, you can get it to the new town clerk. And <clears throat> yeah, because i got to get the dates from her and all that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, first of all, I know you never see it. I know you brought it, yeah, I'll get I brought it up to you before, yeah, right uh, Tom. I think I you want to get the resolution as soon as possible. We really need to do that. We have to have the dates of bidding and all that. This is going to be important. That's why I was late. I was going to be important. I think the point he's about to make is pretty important. She said she'd be willing to assist even after she retires. And I told her I would like to be in, in on it. So anyway, I, I, it's really of, of the utmost importance because we just, you know, this thing, this book we have is way out of date. 
So with the laws have been changed, but we're not up to date, and it would be good to have yeah. that book up to date. So I would just ask that, that you consider that, and I don't know, whatever needs to be done. Um, and you said you had a couple things. Yes, yeah, so I'll let you do your couple things, and then okay. can I come back to that one? Okay. And, and, and this is going to be funny, Bill. I'm the one that's like, we got to read this up. i got to get out of here. Oh, you, you, know? you got to get out of here, too? Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. No, this, will, a hard this, will be very, this will be very quick because maybe we don't discuss it fully, but I think we need to address what happened. Thanks, Art. Thank you very much, Art. Thank you, guys. Well, my glad Thanks for coming in. Okay. Yeah, Art, thank you very much. Okay, so anyway, you know, everybody knows what happened on Tuesday night. That the zoning board turned down the uh, basically turned down the uh, CEA project. They found that it was not a customary agricultural use, and therefore, four to one decision. They said, "Nope, not going to fly." Um, they didn't even get into the coverage issue, which was the next issue that the opponents were going to come up with. Mm -hmm. Now. If the town board feels that having these types of, first of all, you can decide on what kind of message that sends to anybody who wants to come into the town of Webster and do business here, and also in terms of doing any kind of agricultural business. But if the town board wants to address that, it wants to specifically address hydroponic farming, which is probably the wave of the future, Right. you have an opportunity now to change the law. Right. One of the things you can do is change the law and say, this is a customary use. Very simple. Right. You change the law and you include this as a customary use. Right. You change the definition or say the customary or cultural uses include. Correct. Very easy. Um, my suggestion, however, would be that you also look at, that's very easy, you also look at the coverage issue because if that's going to be raised as some reason to deny and that you have people on a board who want to deny something, but the town board decides that it's a good thing, you may want to look at that coverage issue too and see how you want to change the right. writing of that particular law. But it can be changed. There's nothing illegal about it, there's nothing unconstitutional about it, there's nothing wrong about it if the board decides that it's a good thing for the town. Right. So yeah, I've, I've said my piece on that. As far as how this is going to be handled legally, I don't know. I've already filed a notice of appeal on the original decision. Um, I don't know whether or not the attorneys for CEA are going to appeal the zoning board decision we still have a motion before Judge Donna Frio to re-argue the initial case, and that's not going to be, that was supposed to be next Wednesday, but it's not going to be until August 12th now, so there's a lot of stuff going on, and I really, I can't give you a report because I don't know exactly, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I just told you what I... It wasn't the planning board, it was the zoning board. Right, correct, the zoning board. So it won't even go to the planning board at this point. Hmm. Yeah. Well, hmm. I... I I'm just extremely disappointed in that decision. Um, and I know, Tom, that, that you have... Regardless you have, of that ruling, we need to make sure we fight the other, the first judge's ruling, because we can't have that determined. Uh, no, that's why we're appealing it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. John, you were... Uh, yeah, I, you, you, you I, I can't so. begin to express how disappointed I am at, at, at the decision. Um, and I did speak to Charlie about what he just presented. And I know, Tom, that you have expressed in the past to look at this, um, look at zoning from a global perspective, and, and I understand that. But this is a second opportunity that Webster has lost to garner, uh, you know, hundreds of jobs huh. over the word hydroponics. Huh. And I would encourage the board members to consider what Charlie has just proposed, albeit not on a global perspective, but Charlie makes a very valid point. What other company is going to want to come in here and bring hydroponics out? They're not. We just lost hundreds of jobs to Ontario. We, we potentially have lost hundreds of jobs to Mount Morris because you know they're looking at that. And now they're going to take a hard look at it. And why? Because hydroponics, hydroponics is not considered customary. I just, I just think it's a sad day for Webster. I don't think that the issue was the farming end of it, the hydroponics, I think the issue was the coverage. 
But they didn't they didn't address it. They never even I know they didn't address it, but I'm saying the people that were against it weren't against hydroponics, they were against having right. how many acres of well, it? They, again, they, they should probably be addressed too. If we change the law, we should do it. Yeah, make, make a change in both those and deal with that as well. If you think, if the board thinks it's appropriate, um, I don't know how you can say hydroponics isn't appropriate. I just I don't know. Well, they, I also they don't. Did. I don't. It, it, this juncture of where hydroponics is, I also don't see how it could be defined as customary. Well, and to Barry's um, point, the, the opponents weren't against hydroponics. They were uh, against where it was going and the size and all that. The ZBA said their decision ultimately was that hydroponics isn't customary. They couldn't get to. So, they couldn't get to B without without going from A. They couldn't get past A. They never got past A. I watched. Did you watch it? It's it's not, they never got to the coverage of 20%, you know, uh, of this land and all that. They never got to that point. Well, this if you don't agree issue, that it should be there, what, who cares what the coverage is? Exactly. Um, You're right. They didn't make a decision on the coverage. No, they did because not. they couldn't get past that. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't fall under the definition or or the perceived definition, I suppose. <laughs> Did anybody else watch the ZBA meeting? No. I mean, Josh, you were at it, right? And, 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 and I will say this is that <laughs> uh, John DeMarco showed that he has judge uh, background. Mm -hmm. He really did a good job. He, he, it was like watching a trial where he was being the judge, trying to, you know, just keep people focused. Um, that's the thing that stuck out about me, but uh, to me about watching that. But, uh, um, you took a, you know, and, and I think he really tried to say that if there's ambiguity, that the way laws are written and liberties and all that is you side on the landowner, which in this case would have been CEA. But the ZBA members, they, they didn't see it that way. Um, and, uh, look, John, to your point, I, I've been somewhat if you want to call it neutral on this the whole time, I've kind of prided myself on the fact that when I met with the opponents at Mr. Kubrick's house back a few months ago, I told them the same thing that I also told Kevin Fight and Keith Cernick for CEA. And that was that I assume this thing's going to happen, and so now I'm just basically going to do my job as supervisor to protect the town make sure we have the taxes that should come in from the thing, make sure that the sewer lines, the outflows, the electric grids, all of that's taken care of. Um, and I didn't have to make a stand out of anything. It wasn't in our court. But I will say, and I'm, you know, uh, you know, as a, as a businessman, as someone whose family has owned businesses and whatever, I... I I agree with John. I, I you know, and I, I, I feel for the people that live over there, and they've had the on all that. But I was, uh, I will say, and I don't mind that this is taped, that I was somewhat excited about the thought of that type of 21st century industry coming to Webster, and I kind of thought that if it if it works out, and I really thought that CEA did a good job of answering the concerns of berming and blocking and lighting and shades and putting the entrance where it wasn't going to be offensive to right. uh, the, did all the houses. Mm -hmm. I really do think that they did that. Um, is that uh, I just assume, and I, and, and look, I don't have a crystal ball, but I thought someday whatever happens over at the 700 acres of Xerox is going to be spawned off of that development of CEA farms at State Road. I can't explain it, I just thought that that, first of all, do we get the reputation in Webster that we are anti-business? That's a scarlet letter that yes. hurt us. Correct. Um, I don't know. So. That's all I got to say, and, I, and people are watching this, and the opponents come back and say, oh, I, can't, I can't believe, I'm just, I'm saying how I feel about this, is that <laughs> we went through COVID-19, we just lost a ton of t sales tax. Do you, do, do you know that they were going to be making this lettuce 24-7, 365 days a year, and shipping to 90 million people uh, on the right. East Coast? 
Correct me if I'm wrong, wouldn't we be getting the sales tax? It's not in the village, it's in the town, right? Yeah, right. How much sales tax is that? <laughs> yes, Paul. <laughs> How much? Big money. Big? Yeah. So I guess I would... I, I would... <clears throat> Where do we go? How fast do we act? To take the ambiguity out of what is considered conventionally use or whatever. Do we get this language in, and do we do it quickly? Well, the the, the the customary thing is relatively easy in, in terms of taking a look at that. I even looked at the at the specific at the acreage issue um, and the coverage issue, but somebody somebody maybe a couple of people should look at that. Probably Josh, probably um, somebody from the zoning board. Right. Um, you know, I would like to have somebody from the zoning board look at it. Maybe the zoning board attorney. Yeah. Look at it, and anybody else you want to have, you know, an expert. I mean, somebody who might be an expert in it, in it uh, if they're going to redraw it. But that's what we—that's what needs to be looked at, you know. So it's realistic. I mean, we're not—we're right. not—we're not doing it for this particular project. We're doing it long term, correct? For um, for other projects that may come in, but we also, don't, you know, Tom mentioned uh, Xerox. You, you got a lot of land out there that's not being used. That was being used at one time, right. and right now it's not, and it's not going to be used for industrial purposes. I and mean, those days are gone. I think right. we can pretty much agree on that. So, but we don't like know Tom what, said, what could it be used for. This is something, you know, something well, similar. Well, and that and that's true, but we don't know. And Xerox is clearly not going to be telling us in any time right. soon what their intent is with that property. Right. But we do know we have property down here that interest has been expressed in, right? So, you know. And we know that hydroponics is here to stay, not necessarily well, in Webster, but it's being utilized. Again, again, not pushing any particular right. agenda, but the fact is Webster was a farming community for many years. Correct. So you still have farms, especially in the eastern part of town, that are wide open, and you have farmers that want to get rid of it because they're paying huge property taxes, yeah, right. which is another right. foolish thing. I mean, I don't want to say foolish, but this is the thing. People who are against development of, of these kinds of projects forget that these things don't bring in children who are going to cost you more money in school tax. Right. Um, it's really, it's a win for the town all the way around financially. Right. But, so going forward, we need to address, you know, being more specific and the definition of large lot, correct? Yeah. So. Well, I guess we need to look quickly at, at you know, how, how, well, you say quickly, we need to look at it and look at the code and the portions of the code that need to be changed and you know, I'll be glad to be part of it, but we all, I, you know, it's something we got to do. Do you remember when I said, when you get done with your second one, can I come yeah, back? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I, not... I didn't mean it first thing you No, I won't, so because what I wanted to comment on the first one where you said the code, what I wanted to say was, how do we, and, and, and am I, is this too much? But it seems to me, logic says, you, you take the comprehensive plan that's 12 years old, and in parallel, you're updating that with the code and the zoning. Because isn't, don't they all kind of tie to each other? Yeah. Well, usually the zoning, the, z the zoning and the and the code revision follow the comprehensive plan. That's right. usually the way it goes. I mean, they, they come up with a plan and, and they say right. this is you know this is basically a suggestion. It's not yeah. a it's not a law, and then then the code revision people whoever. Is interested looks at the at the, at the comprehensive plan and say, okay, here's what we need to change. Well, and it's funny because I mean, in the meetings I've been in and whatever, certainly there's some talented people in town that have said, you know, man, I've, I've been involved with this like a bar. You know, I can tell you what keeps coming up is a code that just doesn't make any sense right. anymore or whatever. So yeah, I'd like to tap into those people because I don't know if the code book it probably only means like five percent changing I, I don't know you know Charlie do you feel it's more I mean you're, you're saying that it's in pretty bad shape well no, no it's in bad shape only because we've been passing laws that have not been put into the code book okay they're online but we need to have a hard copy update. book and th these books are out of date and, and it's as you know it's caused a few problems right. in meetings and things right. of that nature and so that's it needs to be it needs to be cleaned up mm -hmm. uh, the book physically the book 
that's so that's what I'm talking about. Okay. In terms of code revision, we've had a couple of major revisions. I mean, I chaired the two committees. We had one that followed the 2000, and that lasted for years. That lasted for a couple of years. Then we had another one that was shorter, and that followed the 2008 uh, code code revision. So we've had a couple of code revisions, and we've you know we put in the 228, which is planning board, and the planning board uh, and, and the special use permit uh, process, and. Um, we changed a lot of the zoning back in you know 2001, two and three based on the old on, on the 2000 comprehensive plan. So we've made pretty much. I don't think. Hey, I don't know if it's five percent, ten percent. It's not going to be any more, you know. But I think we there's we need to look at what is outdated and there is stuff that yeah we've been doing pretty well in terms of changing it. You know, we put in the stormwater management chapter. We've re completely redone the sewer. That's all been redone in, in you know in my term. So that book is probably half changed from what it was when I came aboard. So, I don't know that we need that much, but we, we definitely should have some revision, sure. In, in John, you referenced, and I, and I have said, I, I would rather not do what you call spot zoning. And I don't know if this changing the law and customary has anything to do with zoning as much as it does to, I don't know. I mean, but... I, well, the thing that jumps out at me on this time is that... The, the state of New York came back, and this goes way back to, to the, uh, the tomato farm, right. Right, right, right. they came out and they said, this is a, this is a fine use, this is right. agricultural, they pr pretty much gave the blessing. They pulled the rug out from under us because of the conservation use, right. Right? not because right. it was not agriculture. Right. They had, so they basically given the blessing, that was what, I don't know, what was that, four or five years ago, 2016, 15, 16. So, and if anything, these things are springing up all over the place. Like I, you know, a number of you, have, I didn't, but a number of you have visited the various plants around. I go up to Canada once in a while, and you go, boy, you, you take the uh, QEW, you see them all over the freaking place, of different kinds, you know, different, but well, they're, they're all over there. Their ruling? Hmm? Well, I just don't understand their ruling because Albany said it is a farming use. For some reason, <laughs> wait, what didn't they do from that? Because I didn't say hydroponics in the definition. Yeah. That's why. That yeah, we just need to change the definition. Like I say, this is an easy fix. It's a simple fix. This is easy. It's an easy fix. And there's nothing wrong with it. We it's not wait two and a half to you know, three years. It would have been wrong to do it ahead of time, obviously, but we well, yeah, yeah, now now we're not we're we're just now we're not doing it for this well, particular project we're doing uh, it in that the future. I don't want to be disingenuous or be perceived as I said, I'm not, I don't want to get behind spot zoning because this guy in West Webster has been as bonnet about, you know, uh, something that is very different from East Webster. We'll handle zoning in totality and globally. And that's what I think you were referencing, Jim. But if this, this has got to be done relatively quick, how, how do we do that? Somebody look at and the two, not be, somebody look at the two issues that were before the zoning board and say, okay, what, if anything, needs to be changed, what should be changed? Clearly, customary should be changed because I think the intent of the town board and pretty much everybody I've talked to who lives in Webster is that this should have been agricultural. This is agricultural. I, I, I the state of New York has labeled it as yes, agricultural. It's, yes. But it, it, is it customary? No, it's a, it's a new technology. Well, it, it's, be, a, a coming, well, it's not a new technology. It's just new to this area. Well, well, let's put it this way. We, to this area, but it may be customary in another area. Okay. We put in the word customary. What We don't even have to have customary. Right. We could have just said agricultural, and then there would not have well, been an issue. You know? Well, so that's, if the word you customary is something the, we put in. You watched the, 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 the meeting the other night. It, 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 we're, we're basically recanting the meeting. Yeah. Because... In the board, and I look at it, I'm nothing against the ZBA board. It is they they struggled with this word customary. Right. They were trying to basically get in the head of who wrote it years ago and what did they mean then. Mm -hmm. well, how the heck do you do that? You know what I mean? We got Webster dictionaries for customaries. I mean, it got. And I thought John DeMarco did a real good job saying we need to. You know, he he was a judge. Mm -hmm. He was trying to. You know. But it, uh, you know, he, he knew at the end of the day, um, we never got to, they never got to step two. They didn't get to the 20% coverage and all that. Um, so, I, okay. okay, we don't need to go any further with it. No, we don't. I mean, uh, <clears throat> well, do, we, do we look into changing and taking the customer out there, or do we wait three to five years 
until we have a new comprehensive plan, and then we, we look at the zoning then. Because in this situation, I, personally, I'd rather change, make the changes now than later. That's just my personal That's your, your personal decision. Opinion. That's the board's decision. Yeah. Okay. Code is different from zoning. Code needs revisions. You got some talented people who already can kind of give us a heads up on it, like Barb. Zoning. Could the board, I mean, look at the places in town and over the years saying that zoning doesn't make any sense in that part of town anymore? Um, and make the global zoning changes relatively quick? And within well, that. A good, a good example is, is the office part, right? I mean, we thought there was going to be office, but there was the wave of the future 12, 13 years ago when we, when we created the office park district. There's no office parks around. Because they were springing up all over, and all of a sudden they yeah. just died. Especially with the advent of home office now, it's, it's a tough one. I don't know that the board wants to take on capriciously deciding what zoning shouldn't be in what area anymore without having a comprehensive plan committee to assist with that. It really isn't up to the board to design the zoning. It's more up to the residents. Mm -hmm and the residents in the committee that would be formed for the right. comprehensive plan, the committee that would be on that, and yeah. they would hash that's, all that that's, out. That's pretty much the process that takes place. And then when they when they finish it and it's complete, they present it to the board. Right. And as Charlie said, it's a recommendation. Right. The board does not have to follow it to the T. Right. But if you have a group of of residents in your community, along with others who've put all the time into this, um, pretty foolish if you ignore it altogether, too. That, that makes sense, man. I'm just saying, well, how does what Charlie just described, how is that not tantamount to spot zoning? It's not. Oh, it's not spot zoning. No, not at all. It's not spot zoning. It's really, it's really refining the definition of something. Mm -hmm. Just Are you talking about the, the, what we do with, with the agricultural, the agricultural uh, thing? Or well, the, the, the customary and the 20% coverage. Um, the customary definitely is not spot zoning. All you're doing is you're talking about, I mean, that, that was just a word. It's a yeah. definition. Yeah. It's, so a, it's a definition, definition. And you can change the definition <clears throat> as long as it's reasonable and rational. And I think you have a basis if you want to include it because, the, the, again, the, the state of New York has already said that it's agriculture. I, right. I don't think it's really, it's really, and, I, and again, if you talk to the person on the street and you ask that the average person who's not against the project, who's not for the project, the average person who's neutral would say, well, of course it's agriculture. You're growing living things. You're growing plants. For consumption. It's agriculture. Well, I don't think, I mean, to me, I don't know how you not look at that. <laughs> People say it's a factory. I mean, well, is that, you're putting that, things together on, a, on so an assembly line. It's not growing pigs there, which yeah. was there years and years and years ago. Which you could do. That would be agriculture. <laughs> Those people that would be customary. Because Maybe they, 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 they listed, smell. and John got into that, that it, it specifically says what you can't right. raise. But man, it must not have been pigs. It was furry animals or whatever. <laughs> I don't remember. I was watching the thing, but, you know. Okay, so you're defining something. You're changing the definition. That's that. Not and we, and we can list in there what we include. As a matter of fact, I would suggest you list no, in there. Because the 20% coverage. Or take customary out. That would be a good thing, too. Yeah. Right. My interpretation of the 20% coverage was totally met in... Now I'm getting into the mind of when they wrote that. What had to do with residential properties. Right. And large... And that should, that, it again, didn't have to do with... If that's not clear, you know, that should be clarified. And if, if that... I'll just leave it at that. If, right. if people... And there, is, there obviously is an issue as to what that means as well. You have, you have one thought on it, somebody else may have another thought on it. And if that's not clear, that should be redrawn so it is clear, whatever that may be. The town board can then rule on that. That's so why I'm saying those two issues, those two things, which I, apparently are before the or pot, well, one may, might be in front of the zoning board, uh, again, should be dealt with and dealt with now. And this is the time to do it, I think, if the town board wants to. So, um, I do. I just have a question that's nagging at me, and I'm maybe I'm missing the obvious here. 
If we change that and we do it quickly, this project can come back? If they want to. And that doesn't look like we've done it just for them? Well, it probably will look like we did it just for them. That's a political decision. And I'm, that I'm you know. thinking that's kind of where your head's going with spot zoning. It's more it like is. favor yeah. zoning, you know? Well, it, well, well, it, except, that, except that I think, again, I haven't heard anybody say that the CEA project was a bad idea. Therefore, we have what would have been... I have heard I, plenty of people say it should be somewhere else. Yeah, no, it's okay. a bad idea. Yeah. All right. Let's just let's just say let's just say most of the people on this board think that something like this is not a bad thing for the town. It's a good thing for the town. If Correct. you assume it's a good thing for the town and it was a stop because of a decision by the zoning board, then any other project like this is going to be a stop by mm -hmm. one of the boards, probably the zoning board. Mm -hmm. They found a way now to do that. Right. If the town board wants to encourage this kind of development in the town of Webster, you can do it. At least you can. This is one roadblock you can you can knock off the books. Exactly. So in other words, you're you're not doing it just to benefit them. You're doing it to benefit somebody else. If it isn't the CA, maybe somebody else comes down the road. Well, and I I would like to think of it as not so much as a removing a roadblock, but as um, is defining the code so that however it's applied makes more sense, and that itself is less capricious. Well, you the thing is this: we we were already stopped. The, by we, I mean the town of Webster was stopped from put, putting it in Indergrove, which then went just a few miles over the line mm -hmm. and is now benefiting mm -hmm. another county and another town. And I, and I have to say that in defense of the planning board, who initially approved this, they were going from their experience with Intergrow where the state said hydroponics is agriculture. Yes, correct. They were. It had clearly been defined. No, the planning board didn't have a problem. Well, as and far they, as I know, they didn't have a problem. No, I mean, they saw the, no need for variances. They, they felt it, it met everything. I was all for that. The tomatoes. I was all for that. And then I see what's out on 104, and I think we're really lucky. Really? That we didn't put that where it was going to go. Put To put 50 acres of greenhouses mm -hmm. that are much better placed in Ontario, almost out of sight, than they would be on state road. Or on state oh, you're not saying it's bad for Ontario. You're, you're saying no. it's, better, it's better because it's... The location, the location. is okay. so much better because it's it's a monstrosity. Mm -hmm. that's a, and that's only half of it. That's only 25 acres of it. They're going to double that. To put that all in Schreiber's old property... Would have been great. Would have been well. Trevor, tomato growers and stuff, but would it? It certainly would have changed the look of that ex that that section of town. Well, Trevor ended up selling the property anyway, right? I thought it was already sold. I didn't know that he sold it again. I, I I'm not aware of that. Okay, I thought this that was conditional. I, anyway, I thought that was a conditional sale on uh, with Intergrow or, or lease or whatever that that was. I'm, I'm not aware of that. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, the things that the last people were going to do, they were going to verb it so you couldn't see it. Right. They were going to do all that. <clears throat> oh, and if and if that happened, you know, okay. Um, would it have increased traffic? Apparently, it would have uh, truck traffic. Um, there's pros and cons to both both ends of that. I mean, you know, you're used to living in a quiet section of town where all you look at is hay and grass and alfalfa and corn. That's all you see, and you start putting 50 acres or 100 acres of buildings up, That's that changes the whole atmosphere out there, the, the whole color of the, the, the town. I can understand why those people didn't want it there. Well, I, before I, I, you know, the tomato section, that's that's part of my heritage. That's what my, my grandparents and my uncles, they're all hot house, uh, mm. hot house people. We have hot houses right here on uh, Clum Road yep. forever and ever that grew tomatoes and was loved by all. But it was there before, you know, it was there long before the houses were built. I just, I drive past that thing on my way out to Sodas to play golf three, four times a week, and I see that and I think, oh boy, I'm glad that's not on Salt Road. But you know what you just said, Barry? You see it. Yeah. And I was liking the fact that they were building that thing and, and, and adapting to yep. the wishes of the planning board so that you could not see it. And if you remember, remember what I said earlier, 
One thing I was trying to be consistent on is I was telling the opponents the same thing I was telling CEA. I wanted to fly out in June before COVID. If this thing was going to happen, I want to see with my own eyes. Call me Doubting Thomas. I want to see at night when these shades go up. <laughs> Does it diffuse the light and not become, uh, you know, because just because the developer is telling us that, mm -hmm. trust and verify. Ronald Reagan. You know, we had a we had a situation. I wanted to see that myself. We had a situation like this uh, uh, over right off of Ridge Road, the, the, the community that was built between uh, Jackson Road and um, West Overdrive, and those back in there, you know, that were you know where the new McDonald's is. Oh, Pepper Ridge. Yeah, so Pepper Ridge. Then where the you know people were Same up in arms years. because the, you know they didn't want to, they didn't want to see all those things. Well, they put these giant burns and trees up, and I don't think that they can. They can't see it, but they can smell the McDonald's. <laughs> 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 Probably gets them hungry. <laughs> well, in, in defense of Intergrow, when they went out where they did go, they didn't have to do all those things, and that's why you can see it. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, should we put this on the agenda to talk about or look into, or...? Well, I think I think what you can do is um, is charge, and I'll be you know part of it. But we need to t have a couple of people put together and, and look at it and say, what do we do to change? What do we have to change? And somebody from the zoning board. I think we appoint somebody from the ask somebody from the zoning board or ask Barry or if he would do it or if he could appoint somebody to do it. Have John involved. Have Josh involved. And have me involved, and you know, could run a you want. Yeah, okay. be part of it. John Cale could be involved too. Charlie, does this end up being resolution ordinance law? It would be, the way it would work is that we'd probably talk about it at a workshop, mm -hmm. tone it up, and once we had it settled the way the town board liked it or in, the, in a manner that we think is appropriate, then, then you schedule a public hearing. Yeah. And then you then two meetings from that, you, you have the public hearing, and you either pass it or change it or whatever. Yeah. What are you passing? Resolution? A new, a, a local law. law. A local law. I thought I just... Yeah, I, we, we, didn't, we don't do... When we came on board, we did ordinances. I went to a couple of classes, and it basically, local law is better. It's stronger. It's less. It's actually cheaper for the town to do that. You have less publication costs, so we do local law, but it's actually stronger than an ordinance. So. Okay. Well... What's next on the agenda, Tom? Nothing. Are you, Nothing. Late? Are you late for your... No, I, I texted her and, and, and she said that they were running late. They were running late. We got blamed for all this. <laughs> no, 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 no. My daughter texted and said they were, were running late. <laughs> <laughs> He's over here. Bill. You don't believe it. Just wouldn't put it. Let me go. Um, wow. Why did I have more than I bargained for tonight? <laughs> we're done. A lot going on. I can't hang out with you people, you get me in trouble. <laughs>